Starfield is a game with so many items to collect it can be quite daunting. However, there are eight specific items I feel every Starfield player must have at least once during their journey across the settled systems. Number 1. The Anti-Xeno Spacesuit There are a lot of cool-looking armors in the game, but none like the Anti-Xeno Spacesuit. Where most armor sets look more embarrassing than intimidating, the Anti-Xeno spacesuit looks like it was made for us to live out our Terminator power fantasy, and for what it's used for, it damn well should be. You can find the suit during the UC Vanguard quest Hostile Intelligence, where you must go to Londinian, a united colony settlement that was left abandoned after the Terramorphs overwhelmed the city. During the questline, you're tasked with going back to the Perish settlement, which is now infested with Terramorphs, but before entering the city, you can prepare yourself for the ensuing battle at the forward base nearby. There you'll find the anti-Xeno spacesuit, helmet, and boost pack laid out on a table. The suit was made for one purpose and one purpose only, to fight against the weaponized aliens that were developed by the United Colonies. As a result, it has some stats that complement this purpose. It has the Beast Hunter perk that increases the damage it gives to enemies, Auto Medic that instantly heals you, and a damage reduction while standing still. It's the perfect set of armor for the player who prefers to ask questions after everybody's already been killed. Number 2. The Revenant The legendary variant of the Magshir is a gun nuts dream come true, and it can be found towards the end of the Crimson Fleet questline. During the quest Eye of the Storm, you're tasked with entering the atmosphere of a gas giant to loose a vault full of credits found in an abandoned Galbank ship. But the real treasure on board is the weapon found in the ship's control center. Right beside Jasper Crix's body, you can find his weapon of choice, a highly modified magshare that has double the magazine capacity, a bleeding effect, and a fraction of the carrying weight of its standard counterpart. This bad boy has a fire rate faster than almost every other gun in the game. Because of this, you may think that the rounds are small and weak, but you'd be dead wrong. This beast takes 150 rounds of the strongest ammo in the game, and thanks to its comically low weight capacity, this weapon won't be a hindrance to keep in your inventory at all. The only downside I can think of is how goddamn fun it is to use, making any other gun feel boring. Number 3. The Narwhal Ships are some of the most expensive items you can buy, and if we were to rank ships by price tag alone, the narwhal would sit close to the top of that list. With an asking price of 430,000 credits, you'd think this ship would come with a personal chef and a lusty Argonian maid. But before you go splurging your cash on this ship, make sure you have a high enough piloting skill. As this is a C-class ship, you'll need to have maxed out this skill as a prerequisite for flying it. Luckily, you can use the fly simulator at the mast building in New Atlantis. Once that's out the way, you can purchase the ship from Veronica Young, who's found in the Ryujin Industries building in Neon. And although you're now several hundred thousand credits short, upon looking at the narwhal's stats, you'll know it was well worth it. The narwhal comes out of the box with almost all of its systems as high as they can be, a respectable cargo capacity of 2,000 and a crew capacity of 7, which is the highest in the game. But talking numbers is one thing, and actually piloting the ship is entirely another. But don't worry, as the large hull and shield capacity make this ship almost indestructible, and thanks to its powerful weapons, it'll make quick work of enemy ships before they can even make a dent. Number 4. The Poison Storm If you feel like the standard ballistic weapons in Starfield are a little boring, then this next gun may be the thing you're looking for. Inside Core Kinetics and Neon, you can find Matthias, a gun dealer who sells some exceptionally strange firearms. The first weapon he sells is called Mind Tear, which is another variant of the Magshare, this time with the ability to send enemies into a frenzy. But the gun that takes the cake for craziness is definitely the Poison Storm. This variant of the Mag Storm feels very akin to the gasoline laser from Fallout 4. However, instead of shooting expanded plasma, the Poison Storm has depleted uranium rounds that also deal poison damage. And if that doesn't sound crazy enough, then just wait until you shoot the thing. It has a ridiculously high fire rate and holds enough rounds in its magazine to supply a small army. And thanks to its armor-piercing rounds, it's a perfect weapon for killing robots and humans too. Number 5. The Monster Costume Starfield is the first game by Bethesda that separates clothing from armor, and this has allowed us to pimp our characters out like never before. 
And although there's enough cool, unique-looking apparel for an entirely separate video, I think the monster costume takes the cake for the best one. Thankfully, acquiring this costume isn't too hard. Within Saturn's largest moon, Titan, you'll find a settlement by the name of New Homestead. This settlement has turned into quite the tourist hotspot, thanks to its large collection of old Earth artifacts. And though this may be good for business, it's not so good for the sanity of Dr. Juliana Lakota, who finds that the tourists make a mockery of New Homestead's culture and needlessly fill up a clinic. Lakota's plan to uphold New Homestead and respect its culture is by getting you to run around in this goofy-looking costume and scare away tourists. As moronic as it sounds, the tourists are stupid enough to fall for it and run away for dear life. By the end of the quest, Dr. Lakota lets you keep the suit, and although forcing your companions to wear this monstrosity might seem like the best use for it, it's actually best used during your first encounter with the ECS Constant during the side quest First Contact. Wearing the monster costume upon your first meeting with the ship's captain will open up a unique dialogue option, where for a brief moment she thinks you're some kind of alien creature, before supposedly noticing the smell of profuse sweat and seeing the sad, beady eyes of a human through the alien's mouth. And remember how I said this is the best-looking apparel in the game? Funnily enough, this is a spacesuit, and thanks to its absence of any armor rating or unique perks, it's probably the worst spacesuit in the game. But at least it looks cool. Number 6. Hella's Cutter Despite being the first weapon you acquire, the standard cutter is one of the best weapons you can use during the early game. Don't let its low damage fool you. The cutter shoots a laser beam that gives it one of the highest fire rates in the game. On top of that, this mining tool uses no ammo, and instead it works on a recharge system that thankfully lasts all but a few seconds to go from empty to full capacity. And unlike most weapons, the cutters remain an integral part of your loadout all the way to the end, thanks to its resource extraction capabilities. But if you're looking to give a little more flair to your cutter, then you may want to head back to the Argos Extractor's mining outpost where you began your journey. There you'll find a minor locker as soon as you enter the building to the right of your spaceship. Inside, you'll find Hella's Lost Cutter. Admittedly, Hella's Cutter is identical to the standard cutter in almost every way. It has the same stats, and the biggest difference is going to be the yellow paint job. However, it also does have a 20% damage boost against robots, which makes it slightly better than the original cutter. And since the only other way to get a different paint job on your cutter is via a pre-order bonus, Hella's cutter is going to be as close as some players are going to get to pimping out their cutter. Number 7. The Ashta Tamer As soon as you lay your hands on the Bridger, you already know that you're going to be using a seriously fun weapon. With its awesome design and a large area of damage, this grenade launcher has made blowing people up more fun than ever. Within the Empty Nest, a cave you can find during the quest of the same name, you'll find a weapons case inside the cave. Inside will be the Ashta Tamer. And boy, this weapon is truly something to behold. The Ashta Tamer has the same grenade launching capabilities as the Bridger, but with the bonus of dishing out incendiary damage. Compared to the rest of the game's guns, which are all somewhat grounded in reality, the Ashta Tamer feels more at home in the Borderlands game than in Starfield, and I'm all for it. You know what's more fun than blowing your enemies up into smithereens? Blowing them up and then watching their friends next to them catch on fire. You'll be having so much fun that you'll forget you killed half of your companions in the process. Number 8. Juice Boxes The amount of healing items in Starfield can sometimes get overwhelming, especially coming from Skyrim. Back then, all I had to worry about was making sure I had potions of healing and kept most our health items to sell rather than use. But since Starfield's healing items are so powerful, it makes it much harder to hand them over to the trade authority. Not only can this make choosing healing items feel like a goddamn game of chess, but it also takes a toll on your already limited carry weight. Luckily, Starfield has a healing item that resolves both of these issues, and best of all, it's hiding in plain sight. I present to you, Juice Boxes. These succulent cartons of childhood tick all the boxes of a great healing item. They're cheap, they're found in pretty much every building, and they restore health and oxygen. Sure, they only restore two health points, but thanks to their low carry weight, it's easy to carry a ton of these drinks and basically have unlimited health. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.